Hello, today we're celebrating the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What does the Immaculate Conception really celebrate? And why is it that under normal circumstances, all Catholics would be asked to gather in church on this day? Let's begin by hearing the gospel from the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and going a little bit more deeply into what it is that we celebrate today. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. So the Gospel that we hear proclaimed for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception is not about the Immaculate Conception at all. It's about the conception of Jesus, which is what we call the Annunciation. We celebrate that on March 25th, nine months to the day before Christmas. And that is the day that we celebrate Mary conceiving Jesus through the Holy Spirit. So the Immaculate Conception, which is our belief that Mary herself was conceived without sin, immaculately, as we say, that happened many years before, nine months before her own birth to her parents, Anna and Joachim. So why is it that we celebrate Mary being conceived by her parents? What does the church mean to emphasize here? What does that have to do with our lives? Why is that a holy day of obligation under normal circumstances? There's no obligation right now for 2020. But, but the Annunciation is a day that we celebrate, but we're not obligated to go to Mass that day. What exactly is it all about? Well, so the, the Immaculate Conception says that Mary received a gift from God that no one else ever has received. She was conceived without original sin. She doesn't bear the burden of original sin the way that we do. The reason that God did that for her is because God wanted her to have every gift that she needed to meet the challenges that she would face for her very special role in life. Mary had a unique job ahead of her as the mother of Jesus. And so she got a unique gift, a gift that was handpicked by God for that task. She was conceived immaculately. 
which means that she passed no sin onto him. And she had a special gift reserved just for her so that she would be able to be the mother that Jesus needed her to be. So she's the only human being ever to have been conceived without original sin, other than her son, of course. So what does that mean for us? It means that God gave Mary exactly what she needed to fulfill the unique blessings and burdens of her life. And so we must trust that God will also give us whatever we need to face the challenges of our lives. She had the incredible blessing of being born without sin, the only human ever to have that. But we call her the mother of sorrows because being the mother of Jesus wasn't just enjoying the good parts of his life, but also seeing him be mocked and jeered, having people speak unkindly about him, standing at the foot of the cross on the day that he died. She needed to have special gifts given to her in order to face those challenges. So you see there's a direct connection between a blessing that we might have in our life and a burden that we might be asked to bear. And in the same way, sometimes when we have a burden handed to us, we have to look to see, has God already given me a blessing in order to cope with this in some way? Or is the blessing meant to be in the future? Am I now called to be a blessing? The way that people who have been through hard things often become amazing role models and guides and companions and counselors for others. We have to trust on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception that just as God gave Mary whatever she needed for the challenges she would face, so God has done with us. Mary would not have been able to tell you that she was conceived without sin. She would never have been able to say in her lifetime on earth, I was immaculately conceived. I am the immaculate conception. She would never have been able to say that this side of heaven. She didn't know what the gifts were that God had given her. That's why on the Feast of the Annunciation, she said, how can this be? How could this be that I'm the one? If she had known about her Immaculate Conception, she would have said, well, it's about time. Here you are, just in time for me to use the gifts that God has given me. And I think that's true for us with our own burdens as well. When we wind up having a job crisis, a relationship fall apart, when we get a cancer diagnosis, when we have a loved one with one of those problems, when we are plagued by a pandemic in a way particular for us, we are not able to articulate, oh, that's okay though, because God gave me gifts to be able to deal with this. We wouldn't be able to know that. It's not human to know that. Being human means not knowing so much this side of heaven, having to wait for heaven in order to know God's fullest plan for our lives. You should not be surprised that Mary was the only one to have been defined as having a special gift from God in this way ahead of time. Because there are lots of things that the church proclaims about individuals that have gone before us that in no way exclude others who aren't on that list of individuals. Here's an example of what I mean. We know that there's a long list of Catholic saints John the Baptist, Teresa of Avila, John Paul II, John the XXIII, Francis Sinclair, Cosmas and Damien, all these people, all of these famous names of people who've guided us, people who are held up as role models for us. They are the canonized saints. They're the saints the church professes to be in heaven, has evidence that show that we know for certain God has revealed so that we could be confirmed in knowing that these people now live with God in glory. But that doesn't mean that other people aren't part of that list. For every saint who is canonized and who has prayer cards and whose name is known around the world, there are countless people 
men and women who've lived in those exact same neighborhoods and many others. There are countless multitudes of people who lived lives that were hidden to many people except God and maybe a very close circle of people, but whose lives were holy and who therefore are saints, not canonized, but in no way excluded. Just as all of us are called to be saints, to live the life of a saint, all of us are called to do what Mary did, to use whatever gifts God has given us through no choice of our own for God's specific will for our lives. And we won't know until we get to heaven what those gifts were or why God's plan unfolded as it did. But we are going to get to know that plan someday because no one gets out of here alive. Well, actually, actually there is an exception to that. One of us was given another gift too, not to taste natural death. That was a gift that God gave Mary as well, another unique gift. It's called her assumption. And if you want to know more about that, you can Google it and come back to join us in church on August 15th, the day every year when we celebrate Mary's Assumption. So that's a little bit about the Immaculate Conception, and it encourages you and me to consider what might be the gifts God has given us for our particular challenges, and how can we humbly use them as Mary used hers for the good and the salvation and the fulfillment of God's plan for the world. God bless you.